Hello fellow book enthusiasts, welcome back to the Reading Nook. This is just a short little tidbit where I'll be going over and getting a more in-depth look into the 13 houses of the court of night blooming flowers that we've been hearing about in our reading of Cushiel's Dart. So let's get started. In alphabetical order, first up we have Alyssum House. The canon or theme of Alyssum House is modesty. Alyssum adepts are very skilled at creating the illusion of modesty, which is very rare in Terre d'Ange. Recently, in our chapter reading of The Longest Night, we noticed that the adepts of Alyssum came clothed as Yeshuite priests, head to toe completely covered. Next up is Balm. Balm's canon is healing. You come here when you have something wrong with your soul, with your body, with your mind. Many adepts will go into studying massage or other healing techniques. Balm believes that Nama went to the king of Persis in compassion to heal pain in his soul, and so they worship that through their healing. Next up is Bryony House. Bryony's motto is Wealth Seeks Company. Camellia House, the house we heard most recently in episode 8 when Phaedra and Alcuin went to see their first showing upon being accepted as adepts of Nama, a wise choice on the part of Anathiel de Laone, as their canon is perfection. They believe that when Nama slept with the king of Persis, her perfection unveiled left him blind for a fortnight. Of course, Sirius House, where Phaedra was sold at four years old from her parents who were out of money. The Dawain, Miriam Bosqueveux, and her second, Jareth Moran, still serve there today. Soraya, an adept and Phaedra's friend was the Winter Queen in the Midwinter Mosque. A couple other characters we know from Sirius House include Ellen, Etienne, Jacinth, and Donatienne. All these were fosterlings during Phaedra's time of being raised in Sirius House. Next is Dahlia House. Its canon is dignity. The adepts are reserved, dignified, almost opposite to the next house, Eglantine. Eglantine is the house of creativity. Art, writing, singing, dancing, music, madcap genius is true to the canon of Eglantine. At the midwinter mask, Eglantine adepts came in, appeared dressed as a merry band of Singani travelers. Gentian is known for mysticism. Similarly to Balm, adepts are trained in the healing arts such as massage, however, they heal the mind and dreams, the troubled souls that cannot find healing elsewhere. At the mosque, they came dressed as seers and held the opium censers. Brother Louvel, who taught about the history of Terre d'Ange, made his mark here. Heliotrope, a lesser known house, is known for devotion. Thou and no other is their motto. Adepts are said to have the ability to make each patron feel like they are the only one to ever touch their hearts. Their belief is based that Nama basked in love as in the sun. Jasmine House, where Phaedra's mother, Lilian de Silverin, had made her mark. With a canon sensuality and a motto, for pleasure's sake, it's no wonder that Jasmine House is known for sensuality, exoticism, dusky skin, and dark hair. A fun alternative to our next house, Mandrake, one of the less popular houses of the 13. Mandrake's canon is dominance. It's one of the houses of pain where adepts are trained to administer it to their patrons. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Orcus House. The canon is humor. Orcus adepts approach Nama's service with a joy in their hearts and laughter. 
they are known to fill their patrons with delight. Last, but most definitely not least, we come to Valerian House. The canon submission. Valerian is the house where the Dawain of Sirius thought that Phaedra would end up. However, even though they reveal Cushiel as well as Nama, it's not written in the stars for Phaedra to be held within the chains of one such as Valerian, although like Valerian's adepts, she will have her limits put to the test. Thanks for joining me today in the Reading Nook. Please tune in soon for the next chapter.